They've won Tonys and Oscars and Emmys and Grammys. There's no red carpet because they're home in their jammies. From Melrose Place to Broadway to Janeway and her crew. Let Seth and James bring all the stars to you. Anywho. They're entertaining everyone, so who's gonna grouse? Just sit right back and you'll hear some tales on Stars in the House. So bad. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm posting on socials. Hey, it's me, Seth Redesky. So James is upstate. Siri, is so I'm hosting the show uh, by myself. Uh, we are going to do a lot more stars in the house now, which is a fundraiser for the Entertainment Community Fund, which I really can't commit to, the Actors Fund. But it's called the Entertainment Community Fund. Why? Because the Actors Fund people to this day keep thinking it's just for actors. It is not. It has never been. A hundred years ago, anyone who worked in show business was called an actor. So that's why it's called the Actors Fund. But so many people are like, I wish I could get financial help, but I'm not an actor. So finally, they're like, we're going to change our damn name. So now it's the Entertainment Community Fund. No matter what you do in showbiz, whether you're a writer, camera person, um, orchestra member, wig maker, caterer, you can go to the Entertainment Community Fund for help. And right now, we are starting to do a lot more stars in the house. We began it during the pandemic when everyone was home. We did two shows a day, 2 p.m., 8 p.m., 2 p.m., 8 p.m. And then we sort of like just started doing like once every two weeks. But now we're going to start doing a lot more because why? There's a big, fat strike. Writers Guild, I'm a member. sag after I'm a member. Certain people on the other side are not giving in to very rational demands. I'm not going to make this political, but give in already. But the point is until they give in, we have to keep raising money because people aren't working and they need money. So I'm very excited to say that we are having a reunion tonight. Now, before I forget, I just want to make sure what else I'm supposed to say. Oh yeah. So this is our new thing because now we could do it all from our house. We have a studio. So we have full live ass performances. So we have all these amazing singers that are going to be here performing. I want to say they all know their harmony. You know who you are, but a lot of you do. And the ones who do sound really good. Okay. Anywho, it is a reunion of an amazing movie. I'll show you just a little picture. It is this movie, Camp. I was obsessed with it. It came out. I'm still obsessed with it. Do I have to say anything else? Oh, yeah. So you're like watching this amazing show, but you want to help out the entertainment community fund. So please, God, donate. What you're going to do is you're going to go to starsinthehouse.com, right, David? And you're going to send in your donation. After you do, you're going to send an email if you want someone on the show to give a shout out. And where do the donations go? I think it's donations at starsinthehouse.com. So you send an email to donations. You send a screenshot and the donations at starsinthehouse.com and Say whatever you want to say, like, oh my God, I was obsessed with the camp and I can't, whatever you want to say. And then someone hopefully in the cast will read or belt your donation. Before I go on for the show, tomorrow's show, we're doing Stars in the House again, but it's a special one. It's for uh, the people in Maui. So it's to help out the victims and survivors of the Maui wildfires plus the animals. So it's, uh, it's half to this Maui Foundation and half to the Humane Society. And it began because Anne Harada from Avenue Q is from Hawaii. So we're gonna have a full sing through of Avenue Q with basically the entire cast. And they're all gonna be here. We just, we couldn't, because John Tartaglia's in LA, so Ben DeRoch tries to do that. And Natalie Belcon's doing a show. So Carmen Ruben Floyd, Ruby Floyd, who's amazing, is gonna do that. So a full sing through of that damn score, that's all gonna go to Maui, that's tomorrow. Anything else I have to say? Um, I'm in private sound this weekend with Nina West. James wrote everything out for me. Oh, the final thing I have to say, foster care. So our big foster care event, September 18th in New York City, we help older foster youth get adopted or just find forever families, not necessarily adopted, but find families. And it's for older foster kids. You got to believe.org is the organization and the large, enormous concert of September 18th. So many people are there, celebrities that were foster, foster kids like Rosie Perez. It's, we're going to begin with Patina Miller. She wasn't a foster kid, but she's still going to open the show with that amazing song. Um, I think that's all I have to say. Okay, and the final thing is we had um, all these cast members sign these photos um, from, okay, so first of all, we have the camp poster with Robert Jesus, Center Stage. Everyone signed it in my backyard, and we had this amazing casual photo of camp that everyone signed too. $50, $50. So when you make the donation, say, ooh, by the way, I want that photo and include your address. You guys, that's the show. I will see you all tomorrow. What? There's so much talking. Anyway, that's not the show. So that's all I have to say according to James's notes. So we're going to go for a wide shot. First, we're going to start with just the director, writer of camp. He's right next to me. You may know him as Randy Graff, but he's actually known as Todd Graff. He's not Fontaine. Hi, Todd Graff. Hola. Do I have to talk as fast as you? Theme song. Yes, you do, by the way. Not possible. Um, I love Todd Graff. First saw him in, um, well, first heard him in Baby. And then Liz Calloway told me that you were like, I want to write. And she was like, good luck. Cut to amazing writer. Um, so Todd Graff, before we go into this, let me just quickly tell, ask you to describe 
what camp is. What the hell is camp for people that don't know anything about it? Camp is a movie uh, that came out in 2003, a tiny little indie film that we shot in 18 days wow. about uh, a summer camp uh, for kids who were obsessed with theater. And they put on shows every week, uh, inspired by and shot at Stage Door Manor, which I'm guessing everybody listening to this knows what Stage Door Manor is, but it's a theater camp in upstate New York. And uh, it just follows Where you this, went. Well, I went and worked. Not only that, I was uh, uh, many, many famous people went on to become famous. Uh, I was Robert Downey's counselor, just for example. Speaking of which, I just got an email from my friend who said that when you were their counselor, they kept sneaking out and you couldn't figure out how they did it. Do you remember that? Yeah, I'm assuming that's either John Cryer or Josh Charles would be my guess. I'm going to check. Um, do you remember how they snuck out finally? Because apparently you were having a shit fit. Yeah, they they had taken out the mirror in their medicine chest mm -hmm. that was in the wall that separated the two rooms and they would crawl through. But I didn't know that at the time. They were very naughty. Yeah, because I think it was a lot of acting out there. Now, by the way, Stage Door Manor, don't get it twisted. It's not French Woods. They're arch rivals, but they're both amazing. So let's support both, please. Okay, Todd Graff. So David Katz, I wanted to show everybody how I know Todd Graff. Of course, a lot of you know Todd Graff as a amazing singer, but he was also an amazing dancer as well. So let's watch <laughs> Todd dance up a storm and also sound phenomenal. One of my favorite shows in the world. Hit it, Dave. I mean, how what was it like to hey. sing that eight times a week? You know, okay if you get bald, okay if you get fat, but to get bald and fat is really that's unfair. That's not the focus. The focus is oh, how no, amazing that's you the are. focus oh, on, in this corner. Are you talking about Liz or you? Just Liz, kidding, Liz. I hope oh. you're watching. Um, what was it like? <laughs> Liz sang our theme song. What was it like to sing that eight times a week? And no, it was great. You know, it was, it was a magical time, magical experience. I will tell you, Wayne's choreography. <laughs> It was, it was a tough year. Um, <laughs> end of the story. Okay, so look, we have some amazing cast members here. So, Todd, actually, let's, let's just first of all show a couple of photos that we have, David, just for funsies. So what do we have from Campy? Tell everybody who these clowns are. Hold on. They're at the top. Okay. Hit. Who that? Oh, my God. You really think I can see I know, Robin, that? who are those people? Someone closer. Leslie. Leslie. Oh. Yes, that Leslie in the bottom middle, who Leslie, who not only played uh, Jenna's mom in the movie, but she, with her partner, Eddie Peterson, organized this entire event yes. that we are doing this so, evening. Yes, props, the, the amount props. of organization was unbelievable. So let's, David, let's introduce the clowns that are actually in this room with us. Who are the clowns? Um, okay, so everyone say who the hell they are. Oh, here we are. My God, she was one of the stars. He was one of the stars. Everyone is obsessed with my bathroom because there's a bidet. I've never had more people in my bathroom before. Okay, so everyone go around the room, say your name, and say who the hell you are, and use your microphones. Should I start? Yes, please. Hi, my name is Sasha Allen. Hey, you know what? Hey, David. David, the piano's doing that weird thing which happened last time. I think there's some something in front of the piano. Do you hear that? There's either um, a microphone there or it's because something's pressed against it, but it just happened last week and then someone moved something and it was amazing. Is it because everyone's sitting near it? It may be it's something pressed up against it. There's it's, a microphone, but it's, it, it's gotta be, do you hear that weird wobble? Sorry yeah, guys, the boringness. 
It just happened last time and James sorry, fixed it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Is it that? <laughs> so, Jimmy, it's, it's, here. it's something really weird that it did, this did not happen in rehearsal. David, go on your hands and knees, wash the floor. Anyway, see if you can figure it out. Because um, I just wanted to F up the live songs. Actually, it's gone and my jazz chords remain. All right, so Sash, uh, hair. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going around the room. Hi, I'm Dan Letterly and I played Vlad. I thought your name was Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. He played Vlad. Okay, keep going. I'm Joanna Chilcote Fellows and I played Ellen. Oh my God, you got to make out with Dan. What was it like? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know. I mean, okay. I was 16 and he was 24 and my dad was on set. So yeah. it was uh, very professional. Have you seen the movie Lolita? Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> Hi, I'm Steven Cutts and I played Sean. With some amazing high notes, which by the way, he's still got and you're going to hear him later. Let's keep. <laughs> I'm Vince Romoli and I played Spitzer. Otherwise known as the Biatch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tiffany Taylor and I played Jenna. Hi. And what up? I'm Robin De Jesus and I played Michael. Yeah. Yes, correct, Mundo. Um, okay, so by the way, I thought this was going to be this amazing emotional reunion because I had the whole original cast yeah. on my talk show for the Chatterbox 20 years ago, and literally everyone is here is like, I wasn't there. I'm like, you were all there. None of you remember it. Robert, do you remember coming to my Chatterbox? Yeah, I absolutely remember that. Okay, everyone else was like, never met you before. I'm like, you were at my talk show. <laughs> yes. Sons of bitches. Um, anyway, <laughs> you guys, I love your show. Okay, so here we go. I need to know how you all got the gig. Robin, how'd you get the damn gig? I got the gig. I'm in the darkness, yo. I feel some kind of way about that. Um, Hold on, we're, we're gonna. Uh, oh, yeah, we well, why don't you? You can. You're allowed to move around. Robin, get the hell up and stand up and get. Okay, okay, wait. Find your light. Get in your light. Get in here. Carolyn. Oh my god. Oh my. Fireside <laughs> chat. What you would call it? I should switch to someone else's. Like, how about that? Um, I I got an audition because I was working at a summer camp as a camp counselor. One of the parents, Neil Benari. Was an Aida at the time. Wait, Neil Benari? Mm -hmm. I did Let Me Tenor with him. Did you really? Yes, I so, love it. So his daughter, I was his daughter's summer camp counselor in Connecticut. He sent the open call, like there was like a flyer uh, to wow. the camp, and me and another student went and ended up auditioning. And a week later, after like a bunch of callbacks with Todd, which were really grueling, and that was the first. That was the year, if y'all remember, that was the first year of American Idol. So for me, I didn't know what a cattle call was. That was the first time I had ever seen one on TV, and all of a sudden we were in the middle of one. And after a week and a half of that, um, that's how I was in the movie. Why? What was so grueling about the auditions? And Todd, why are you so annoying? Hold on, get Todd a damn microphone. Well, why couldn't you cast Robin right away? Who the hell else could have played his role? Nobody, obviously. <laughs> so what took a week of auditions? You know, every, it was a non-union movie, so no one had ever done anything before. And I needed to know more than that they could just kind of read the scene uh, in that moment, but that they could really work on a movie and develop a scene and, and work with other actors. They'd never, none of them had ever done anything. And so uh, the, I had to mix and match and it went on sort of like eight hour days of them uh, coming in, reading, singing, dancing, reading, singing, dancing. Did you know that Robin was amazing when you first heard him? Or you're like, of course. Did and you really? Absolutely. <laughs> No, you're not. so shady? Well, because, it, well, because, it's, <laughs> because it's such a non-answer. Yes, I did. I wanted someone to be like, but he needed this, he needed that. I want specificity. By the way, Robin told me he sings in the key of bitch. I remember that, Robin. <laughs> Hi, boys. Keep going. And he was so, he had such um, a sweet and sensitive quality because it was before he became the jaded show business veteran that he is now. And he was... <laughs> Uh, he, he, you know, he had, he had acne yeah. and, and it was, he was just unapologetically who he was and we loved him. Robin was amazing in the movie. As a matter of fact, actually, why don't we show that little clip that I have? Robin has this great moment where basically he's hoping his parents are going to come. Vlad convinces him to call his parents and his parents passive aggressively are like, sure, we'll show up. And then they don't show up. He's starring as Romeo and Romeo and Juliet. And he's got this dramatic moment and wait, Tiffany, wait. Who else? Wait, aren't you in the scene? Yeah. 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 Oh, well, so for, before we do it, so Tiffany, who told you to have to have such a riveting smile in that scene? <laughs> That's all I could have. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> was that direction? Because it's hilarious. That's all that I could do. Well, because you know, smile. she has her mouth <laughs> wired shut, but she's going to put on a diet. So anyway, here's some of Robin's dramatic acting when he sees his parents are not there. You can hit it, David, whenever you want. What is the prince's doom? What sorrow craves acquaintance?
Tell me. Chino. How many bullets are left in this gun? But by the way, excellent actor, Robin. Um, that is your natural hair, am I correct? In that scene, the red. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just just want to clarify. So, wait, what was your audition? Because your mouth was part shut the whole show, and then at the end, you're like singing your face off. So, did you have to sing for your audition? Yeah. I think I sang Whitney, didn't I? <gasps> you did. I think you did. did Whitney. Which yes. one? Don't, don't make me close one more door. No, I will always love you. Yeah. Yeah. I sang oh, wow. With I don't know what I was thinking, but it worked. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Okay, let's awesome. keep going. Yes, dear. What about your audition? I don't remember my audition. What you I don't remember your audition. I don't either. remember my LA. audition. I was in LA. Yeah. Um, I think I was the only cast member. Uh, uh, you know, Bernie Telsey and. Um, and uh, Victoria Pettibone, who cast the movie, they had to, you know, I remember running into Bernie at a, a public pool on Leroy Street putting up a flyer because you were they, the flyer? no, he was. For camp? Yes, to, for auditions. <laughs> he was they had to find people who had never done anything. I love it. So we just went to like public restrooms and was like the urinal, like <laughs> uh, whoever. You know. Wow, so wait, so you don't actually remember your, did you remember I, getting the gig, getting the phone yeah, call? Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, I, I just don't remember what I sang or, or anything, but yeah. <laughs> I remember I, I, I it was uh, Robin and I, we were, we were both. We, we were in the same, the same, call, hold up. Yeah. I, what I remember, I just want to point out something real shady real quick. What I remember was we were supposed to find out the casting on a Friday, and then instead of finding out whether we yeah. got the parts or didn't, we found out that y'all were going to have auditions in L.A. over the weekend. Oh. Whoa. Remember. <laughs> <laughs> we did we did find out on monday though right we found out on monday but it was a wait, terrible sorry, weekend for all of us <laughs> wait so is that when you auditioned yeah. uh yeah. yeah so i wonder what new york yeah. you got the part of <laughs> no wonder all the sports is in a bad mood what okay uh, <laughs> i don't know why it was it's the first new york actor i can think of okay go what was your audition oh you know what the cast was already assembled todd and i just talked about this and um I had Charlie on the camera. Yes, I I had to. Um, <laughs> oh well, no, he reminded me. I had to audition in front of everybody. Wait, in front of the cast? In front yeah. of the entire cast. They were in rehearsal. Wait, you can't say Todd take a break from the audition. You said let let all these times people sit down and judge. I didn't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> we the whole cast was doing a music rehearsal, and we were rehearsing in my apartment. And Stephen came and. I, I just said, well, just stand here and sing. And Tim <gasps> Weil, our musical director, played. Everybody watched. He sang fabulously. Everybody cheered. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, sit down and start learning the songs with everybody else. Wait, so Robin needed 10 callbacks. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen needed a song. <laughs> what was the song? I Will Always Love You. You know what? I probably sang uh, Let's Stay Together, Al Green. Oh, it's my let's too. stay together. Yeah. Put down the octave. Uh, up the octave. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right, 60s dress. Joanna, what was your audition? So what happened was <laughs> exactly. my little sister's dance teacher went to college with Todd, oh. Elaine Seidman. I love it. And um, she was telling the kids in her dance class, she was like, hey, my friend is doing this movie and they're looking for dancers. And I was there to pick my sister up from class. It's and so, she looks um, at me. Oh, I'm watching Cisco. Pit -pit. <laughs> <laughs> it was honestly... Totally. Um, so yeah, so I'm there to pick her up from class and Elaine looks at me and goes, you sing, right? They're looking for singers too. And so I went up to the cattle call and I did the dance part first and they cut me immediately because I am not that. And uh, <laughs> my mother was there and she is the OG Mama Rose. Mm. And she walked up to the people at the casting table and she said, but my daughter, sing. <laughs> my daughter is here to sing. <laughs> Good for her. And I sang, let's hear it for the boy. Mm -hmm. And Whoa. I sang it so many times. They kicked us out of the studio, the audition studio, because they were out of time. And I was singing it in the bathroom while Victoria Pettibone was recording it. And then I went back up to New York. I was in Baltimore. Went back up like three or four times for more callbacks. And then, yeah. Am I crazy to think you sang Where the Boys Are? Oh, I did that one too. Yeah. I knew it had something to do with boys. But by the way, it's so not a singing role. It's like such a major acting role. Well, she had to sing, and I'm telling you, I'm not going. Okay, four measures of it. No, the that's not thing? true. It's the whole well, song the virtually. Whole I have to say you did cut the tear down the mountain. Yeah, I was a little yeah. angry, but the rest of it wasn't. Actually, you know what? <laughs> Why don't we show that? So this is the moment where basically they decided to do 
colorblind casting for Dream Girls, which is classic camp, and you, you get the role of Effie in a weird, so not an Effie wig, it's like a 50s girl group wig. It's a fabulous wig. Representation matters, y'all. Represent representation matters. <laughs> and your, your Curtis is like eight years old. <laughs> First of all, the idea of casting Curtis not as a brother, but as Lily, the <laughs> eight-year-old. Wait, whose brilliant idea was it to cast the eight-year-old with the glasses? Well, I wrote it, so I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, but so you purposely wanted it to be like the littlest yes, kid in the exactly. camp. Yes, exactly. Okay. It was the little brother of another speak character. The whole movie, and he has like the most dramatic role. Okay, anyway, by the way, you sound amazing in it. Literally, I was like, who is that belting? So this is the production of Dream Girls at Camp the And can I also just yes. say that Kyrie Bess, who played the little eight-year-old, is attending virtually, and I haven't seen him since then, so I'm freaking out. I'm going to see him as a 30-year-old now. Oh, well, shit. Well, I guess, you know what? Why don't we save that until Ky Kyrie? Kyrie. Yeah. Why don't we say until Kyrie's here so he can now observe what it was like when he was two feet tall? So just know that there's amazing singing coming up. Okay, so hold that clip. Next, how'd you get the role, Daniel? Uh, I do I do remember it was a grueling audition process. I remember I think I had like three callbacks, which Sorry, Robin. I guess that's not, <laughs> not ten. Bad, but I mean, I don't know what I sang, probably Corner of the Sky, because it was the only thing I ever sang back then ever. So, you know, and um you know who your big champion was then? I don't know if you remember him being there when you auditioned. It was Arthur Lawrence. Oh, what? yes. Yeah. I do remember that. Wait, Arthur yeah. Lawrence? I did sing a little bit of Maria then, too, uh -huh. didn't I? Mm -hmm. yeah. Hold on. Why was Arthur Lawrence here? Arthur Lawrence was my uh, mentor. And the reason why I wrote Camp in the first place was I had written something else and I gave it to him to read, which I did whenever I wrote something. And he said, not only should you put this in a desk drawer, you should burn the desk. <laughs> and I said, OK. He said, write what you know. If you want to direct and it's your first movie, write something you know. And I thought, what do I know? And then I wrote Camp. Well, OK, so by the way, let me show this clip. This is like a this is to me just summarizes what Camp is. This is whenever all the kids are going on the bus and I dropped off my daughter for stage or manner. And this is just like classic what camp is. So it's all these like young kids. And the sing-along choice, by the way, is how it is so perfect for like 12 year olds. So let's just have a clip of what camp is. Hit it when you get to it. We do. You gonna play some softball this summer? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's so brilliant. Um, okay, so you so you got it after three auditions because you were up to snuff. Sorry, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> let me read your audition, Sasha. Uh, okay. Yes, please. I don't know which one works. Um, I actually auditioned for it a few years before everybody else did because I did the reading. They had a they were, it was supposed to be a we did a workshop uh, of it. a production before before this time around. So I was lucky enough to be able to do both. Oh, so yeah. you were really young when you did the workshop. Yes, yes. I was You're gonna see. Did you, did you go to like musical theater summer camp? I went. I went to LaGuardia High School. So I was in LaGuardia High School doing. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. So you did, so let's we have actually workshop. Footage, right? That yeah, is, I, I want to see this. Sure the, do. So, like the so big fun. reveals are, you'll recognize definitely some people there. But Laura Bob Bundy, this is post Ruthless off Broadway, but it's pre Hairspray, right? Pre it's everything else as an adult. She, oh, why she was like a this? kid? Uh, two thousand maybe? Two thousand one? No, it was in the nineties. In the nineties? Whoa, <laughs> really? Yeah, because yeah, I was in high school. So okay, no, so I'm you're aging, aging and then um, Aaron Burster, Leslie Odom Jr. is in it before he did my Dream Ghost concert 2001. So this is like 2000. And then there's another shocking, I feel like there are three shocking reveals throughout it. So take a gander. And where were you rehearsing? Is this 890 old yeah. school? Yeah. 890 yeah. was Michael Bennett Studios down, which I don't think even people rehearse there anymore, do they, right? It just all went away. <laughs> So depressing. Like it might oh, make yeah. a comeback. I feel like I've heard right now it's 520. Yeah. Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> well, someone's alarm is going off. Is that like the carbon monoxide because it's so hot down here? Good to know. Okay, so Probably. there's some alarm. Okay, so this is the workshop footage. Anything else you want to tell us? Who was choreographing this, by the way? His name was Ray Leeper, and he was great. So he was choreographing. Who was music directing at the time? Tim Wilde. So he Tim stayed Wilde. with it. He was from Brent. Uh, by the way, Robin, is that how Tim Wilde knew you? Is that how you got Rent? Because Tim knew you already? Uh, kind of. It was uh, that that after we shot camp i didn't have anything on my resume 
And I had done a reading of In the Heights that was like super duper cash. And the producers of In the Heights were the producers of Rent. So when I showed up to that call, I was like, thank God I'm a nice person because I had a great relationship with Tim and I had a great relationship with the producers. And you got the gig. Yes. All right, so this is the rehearsal. You recognize a lot of people. And it's this is it's so exciting to watch all these young people. Okay, hit it. Um, first of all, that was amazing. Second of all, don't forget, A, I have a lot of donations that people are going to start reading. But besides the donations, people are also buying these autographed. We have a poster and we have a, who took this? Where's this photo from? Is this yours, Robbins? Thank you. It's so great. So the cast is autographed. So just um, when you, it's 50 bucks for these and just, you know, tell us what you want because we have it in the donations. But let's read some of them. I'll start and I'll pass it around. Of course, one of our favorites who watches our live stream live all the time, Isabel, she watches it from Germany. Wow. So she literally wakes up at whatever the hell time it is there. 
Guys, I'm so glad that you're back with new shows. Love, Isabel from Germany. Jan from Illinois or Illinois. And then we have um, <laughs> our favorite Scott in stupidly hot Kansas City. He wrote 50 bucks. Happy to support the Entertainment Community Fund and happy for the family reunion with the Stars in the House. Something called the Sith Core Fam. Stars in the House core family, Sith core fam. Thanks as always to Seth and James. Hey, David and everyone starts in the house and to the cast of the all time classic camp. Okay, so Todd, number four, this is for you. Whoever needs reading glasses, you guys are too young, oh, but I knew. I, I need them. Awesome. Oh. I don't have my readers. <laughs> Microphone, please. Uh, please have Todd say, hello, baby, go see a show. Hello, baby, <laughs> go see a show. <laughs> that's from Jack in New York. I wonder if that's Jack Feldman. Oh, I wonder. Uh, no last name? Then, uh, do I keep going? Yes, dear. Okay. Uh, happy to help out again from James in New York. Union Strong, absolutely. Right. We want to thank uh, Fran Drescher and Duncan for helping make this happen tonight also. Todd went uh, to high school with Fran Drescher? No, no. I've just known her forever. Uh, but I wrote and directed The Beautician and the Beast, which yes. she starred in. And in that movie she's a union organizer we completely forgot and suddenly there were like a million memes of her being a union organizer in that movie life imitates art i told you uh i first this is nancy in massachusetts i first met todd beginner showcase wow that was before it was called stage door manor um precursor to stage door manor in the mid-1970s he did a killer job as the artful dodger and oliver oh thank you and i had the privilege of being in his original play was it called the chances we take it was the first play i wrote i was 12 years old when i wrote it wow. um was he 14 when he wrote this play? No, I was 12 when I wrote the play. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Lots of fun memories. Nancy, uh, I thank you, and thanks for donating. Bye -bye. Pass it to the old, good old right, Vince. Here you go, Vince. You're, I think it's number seven, yeah. Don't forget, people, you go to starsinthehouse.com to donate, and then you send your information to donations at starsinthehouse.com. It's on the bottom of the screen. But we're raising money for the Entertainment Community Fund to help the strikers. Let's hear it. It says, hello, I donated two stars in the House Entertainment Community Fund in honor of the awesome camp reunion. I would love to have a signed poster. This cast and Seth are freaking amazing. Liz, for uh, $51.50. Thank you. Aww. Oh, here's another one. Uh, you're right there. Okay. Please tell Todd that Rohan, Sue, and Joe love him and Tio John, and we all want a sequel. Joe from New York. Sequel. Can't see. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Joe. They're all the counselors. Oh, no. no, you go because I'm the glass. No. Robin can't see. <laughs> We'd love to see Joanna fellows sing when you're in Adams complete with that choreography she can from her amazing production of Adams Family the musical at Seneca Valley High School where she's the rock and inspiration for hundreds of kids the request is coming from Cindy Lou who Tiny Tim and costume mom Heidi Rose from Maryland y'all are ridiculous and I love you <laughs> ah, Von the choreography. Um, all right, so by the way, I got a very sweet text from Liz Calloway. How dare you? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. <laughs> she said, by the way, I've never seen that clip before. Oh my God, that clip is amazing. You guys are so good in that. All right, so we're going to start with our first song. Now, listen, these mofos are singing live for you because we're raising money for the Entertainment Community Fund. They haven't sung these songs in probably 20 years. They definitely haven't sung the harmony from what I noticed in rehearsals. <laughs> um, <laughs> But we're going to try and you're going to make those donations because people are not working and basically artists live paycheck to paycheck. Um, okay, so here we go. Uh, let me make sure I know what we're doing first. We're first going to do the downer song, How Shall I See You Through My <laughs> Streaming, Ouch. Streaming Tears. Okay, so hold okay. on. Um, this, oh, this ending. Oh, you know the ending for this. Okay, this one actually works okay. Let me make sure I'm playing this right. Yeah, fuck. Okay, so here, we're gonna, so wait, do we wanna see when this happens in the show, in the movie, I mean? Who wants to describe it? Who actually, who's the lead singer on this? I can't remember. Sasha. Sasha. Hey, Sasha, why don't you describe what happens when it happens in beep, beep, Sasha center stage. Sasha tours with the Rolling Stones. I do tour with the Rolling Couldn't Stones. Couldn't care less, but hair. <laughs> <laughs> hair, we care. We care. We care. She tears it up, <laughs> honey. I'm sure they're a wonderful group, up and coming group, but hair, I'm super impressed by. <laughs> I did do hair, I opened hair. That, that. That's what I'm impressed by. Okay, I love Broadway. Fine. Sash, tell everyone what happens in the movie while you sing this and why your voice is still so amazing. Go. Uh, why my voice? So, um, this is it's the opening. We are kind of um, we are here to support 
Robin, and it's it's just like a coming together of support and love for oh. all the things that have happened to him in the in his high school. And so, yeah, it's I, that's what I took from it. Yeah. I love it. I love the subtext. Yeah. Okay, so far, far, far. Ready? Three, four. Father, Troubled mind. Uh. Well, now we're going to introduce the virtual group. So we have people that don't live in New York City, even though some of these people actually here don't live in New York City, but they flew the HM. But I'm very happy that everyone is available on StreamYard, which, by the way, is one of our sponsors. If people don't know, when I first did Stars in the House with James, my yeah. bright idea was to have all of our guests on FaceTime, and I was going to hold the phone up next to the camera because I'd never heard of a split screen before. So I was like, I'll have that Kelly O'Hara on FaceTime, and then she'll sing. And David Katz and James discovered StreamYard, and that's how we got to do split screens. It was before I even knew what Zoom was. And now they're one of our sponsors. So thank you, StreamYard, for supporting us for so many years now. We began 2020, three days, four days after Broadway shut down. Okay, so our virtual group, uh, why don't we bring them all on at once? I'm going to do a one by one. We'll do one by one. So that's what I'll do, David. Okay. So first we have Ryan Fitzgerald. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Ah! Hey, Ryan. Oh, you too. You Hey guys. <laughs> That's all we need. Sorry, we've had cocktails. Uh huh. You weren't old when you did the movie, right? How old were you when you did the movie? I would say probably 21. 
I was one of the. Oh, few so you were an alcoholic back then. Cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. One, <laughs> one of our turkey lurking dancers, Tracy Beezer, who's on a million Broadway shows. Trace, where are you, dear? Hey. hey. Hi, <laughs> you guys sound good. You sound good. Yeah. <laughs> they still got it. You look uh, good. They all the way got it. <laughs> then we have um the uh the non-camp, the the mother who approvingly watches her daughter in the final scene. She like, turns out she is talented and I'm married to a horrible person. We have Leslie Fry. <laughs> <laughs> Le Thank you, Leslie. Leslie made it happen. Yeah. Like Mariah, make it happen. <laughs> okay, and then, thank you. Then we have, um, I think the I'm Still Here chick, right? Brittany Pollock and our ABT dancer. <laughs> so good to see everyone. <laughs> it's all good. And finally, one of my friends who I haven't seen in a million years, Takina Moore. Hey, Takina. Uh, Takina. <laughs> <laughs> Hey y'all! Y'all sound amazing. Oh my gosh, I'm over here like what? <laughs> we all are. Um, I think Kina, so good to see. You. Did Kina did my hair concert, and of course, Legally Blonde. Okay, so I want to show three clips. Let's show our because a lot of you are this. Oh my god, not on this. Oh, wait, not on my list. So tell me who they are. Brad well, this Brad Simmons. Brad Simmons. <laughs> Hey everybody! Oh, hey. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so first of all, everybody has to know. So, is it Lana? Is it Tiffany? Or do you just go by Miss Biatch? Which one is it? Go. <laughs> uh, so my stage name, uh, not my choice, was Alana Allen. My real name is Tiffany. Uh, we couldn't have two Tiffanys. That's right, girl. <laughs> So now you're Tiffany permanently. Yeah, I mean that was that was my name for real. <laughs> okay, I love it. Okay, everyone need everyone need that cleared up because I'm like, who the H? By the way, do you remember doing my Chatterbox 20 years ago and singing "I'm Still Here" with Anna live? Okay, you know what? Get her off screen. I'm furious. Um, <laughs> I cannot believe you, clowns. It was like the highlight of my life. Okay, so oh let's watch something. So God, since I have you on screen. You know, too little, too late. Okay, so Todd Graff bought your color to back into the zeitgeist. So, Alana, you're in the middle, or should I say, Tiffany, you're in the middle. Oh Tequina, you're dancing, and who else? Who's it? Tracy, you're the other dancer. Yes. Tracy, and then you can see Robin in the background. So, let's, we have it in three parts. Let's watch all three parts of the amazing. We have to separate them because if we show more than 30 seconds, we basically get booted off of YouTube. So, let's do part one, shall we, David? <laughs> We're going to keep going. You guys tear it up. Let's watch part two. Okay, the dancing is amazing. By the way, Jerry Mitchell put that together based on Michael Bennett. The final clip is, it's so perfect to graph because, you know, these camps, they run shows all at the same time. So as Hercules is happening, naturally, there is a, another musical that's taking place at the same time about basically 50-year-old menopausal women played by 12-year-olds. So it, it goes... <laughs> they actually did do file lace. By the way, Julia Murney was I'm Still Here, actually, which is classic. So this is a combination of what's happening in the camp. And it's amazing how... Both parts of music could go together. Did Tim, did you use your microphone. Did Tim think of that uh, to bring I, in? Yes. We're going to say Tim Wilde did. It's, We're going to say Tim Wilde. It's brilliant. Okay, so let's watch the finale. It's so good. Hit it.
let me just quickly say that Jerry put together that, but our choreographer for the whole movie was Michelle Lynch. I know Michelle. Yes, fabulous. And um, also, I seem to remember, Sasha, you were badly injured when we were doing that number. Wait, a turkey you hit you? through it. Tripped off the stage. <laughs> Showgirls? <laughs> exactly. No. <laughs> yeah, so I had like a, a whole cast. But, but, uh, and the girl who sings I'm Still Here, Julie Kleiner, is also one of the dancers in Turkey Lurkey, yeah. just in a blonde wig. Wait a minute, she's doing double duty? That's amazing. Yes. That's what you do with a non union movie, you double cast. Yeah. Um, okay, so look. Virtual people, we love you. Then we have to have a 30 year camp reunion where everyone's gonna be in the same damn room. So that's next for you, clowns. Right now, we're gonna go to our celebrity shout outs and we're gonna try to fix my piano, which is buzzing annoyingly. So, virtual people, we love you. Dakina, it's so good wow. seeing you. Yeah. Tiffany, oh, Alana, okay. peace out. Watch the celebrity shout outs. Peace out. Hi. It's the Graff family. It's Eileen. It's cousin Randy. It's Nika. And we're celebrating 20 years of. Camp! Yay! Yay! Congratulations. Congratulations. Happy 20th anniversary, Camp. I'm Tamara Tooney and a longtime friend of Toddykins. And just sending so much love and congratulations to the entire team who made such a beautiful little movie that touched so many hearts. And who doesn't love a good musical? And who didn't enjoy? a great musical theater camp. Congratulations, everybody. Mwah! Congratulations on the 20 year anniversary of camp. It's such a good movie. Yay, yay camp. I, like every other musical theater geek, adore camp. And I remember when I first saw it, I felt, oh, why am I so old? Because I wanna go back to those days where you know you go to camp or you go and you you, you, you know you're, you're young and you're doing theater or <clears throat> summer stock or something like that and you go gosh to be young again and now that i realize that it's even older than those days when i saw it you're really making me feel old i'm very thrilled that this is your anniversary of course i love the film uh, and, and seen it well, it's it's been a couple of years since I've seen it, but I'm very, very happy for you all, uh, and uh, congratulations. I can't believe how one movie can make me feel so old over decades. Oh my God, you guys! Happy 20th anniversary? How is that even possible? I don't know, but it's just as strong a message as ever. We love camp, and please enjoy the 20 years. It's Donna Murphy here, and I just wanted to wish the singular film, Camp, a happy 20th anniversary. That's got me kind of freaking out, actually, just in terms of the passage of time. But I was lucky enough to get to be uh, around seeing some early screenings when Todd was still putting together the film and editing it and I loved being a part of that early process and getting to see the process and I'm just so proud of my friend Todd Graff and everyone involved in this really wonderful, funny and moving and just really unusual film. Anyway, happy 20th anniversary camp. Love you, Taddy. Hi. 20th anniversary to my pal Todd Graff and to everyone who was involved with camp. I remember many years ago when Todd and I were doing Baby together, he said to me, I'm not an actor, I'm a writer. And I remember thinking, yeah, sure, everyone says that. And then I saw camp and I went, oh my God, he is a writer, he's incredible. Todd, I am so, so proud of you. Congratulations. Happy 20th anniversary, it's Michelle. Oh my gosh, my favorite memory is the first time Robin went up in the lift. Robin, you went up and the look on your face, I will never forget, was a joy of like pure freedom and just being yourself, living your best life. And that feeling you brought every time you went up in the lift, every time we did it in the movie for filming, and it's actually the feeling like you all brought this this acceptance 
joy, authenticity, rawness, realness, and beauty of what it's like to just live in your body and your real self. And it's such a gift. And I hope the world can experience more of all of you. I love you all so much. Oh my God, 30 years. Has it really been 30 years? Congratulations, campers. I love you all. Go get them. Keep encouraging young kids to do everything that you've already done. Oh my God, I love this movie. This was the most fun that Vicky and I had because we had to cast everyone that was non-union, which meant we knew no one. Uh, and all of these people were found through open calls and through, you know, young actors that we knew. But most importantly, look at these faces. They're all like have careers right now. But the best thing about it was working with Todd and because it's the funniest movie ever. And I still watch it like every year. <laughs> Happy 20th anniversary. Wow, amazing. Uh, Todd made such a beautiful jewel of a film and it was so much fun to cast. And we truly fell in love with every artist that we did cast, whether it was the leads, each member of the ensemble, they all just made this film shine. And it was such a joy to watch it all come together. Um, so kudos to everyone. Happy 20th anniversary. Happy 20th birthday. And uh, let the spirit of camp live on. Hi, everybody. Michael Gore here. I had the good fortune to be asked by Todd Graff to compose two original songs for the movie Camp. Here's where I stand and I sing for you, both with lyricist Lynn Ahrens. Lynn and I had a terrific time working on this movie. We'd like to take this opportunity to wish Todd and the entire cast and crew of Camp our best wishes and congrats on this 20th anniversary celebration. Bravo. Hi, it's Lynn Ahrens and I just wanna say congratulations on 20 years of Camp. Uh, it's such a wonderful movie. I'm, I'm so proud to be part of it. Uh, every time I tell someone that I wrote some songs for camp, they're very, very impressed. Uh, it was a wonderful time writing with Michael Gore and uh, contributing to the movie where uh, all of those young up and coming stars made their start. It was, it was just great fun. So congratulations all these years later. It's amazing. Uh, have a great show. Seth and James, love to you both. Um, and uh, happy camp. Congratulations on the 20th anniversary of CAMP! Hey, it's Jeremy Jordan. Happy 20th anniversary to CAMP! Uh, unfortunately, if, if it would have come along maybe a little bit earlier, it might have impacted me a little bit more because I was just on my way to go to college to study musical theater and had no idea that camps like this existed before that. So, uh, I was a little behind. But uh, all my friends at school were like, oh my God, it was just like that. I was like, great, I, I'm sure it was. And uh, I just stayed at home watching, you know, pirated performances of Les Miserables and Sweeney Todd. So <laughs> anyways, I love the movie, of course, once I finally did see it. And uh, wishing you guys all a wonderful celebration. Hey, it's Danny Burstein. I just wanted to send my congratulations to my buddy Todd Graff and everybody involved with the film camp. Uh, I wanted to say happy 20th anniversary. Amazing. I can't believe it's been 20 years. It feels like it's always been a part of the theater community and a part of my life. I remember going to see it when it first came out and feeling like it was meant just for me. And then when Steve came out at the end, you know, come on, amazing. I wish you nothing but health and happiness and congratulations. Love you all. Hey, it's your old pal J.K. Simmons here with congratulations on the uh, 20 year anniversary of camp, which must be a mistake because if that's the case, it's over 35 years since you and I met on Birds of Paradise off Broadway. That's not possible. If that were the case, my beard would be white by now. Congratulations to the cast and crew of CAMP on their unbelievably 20th year anniversary. Thank you for bringing us all back to a time in our lives when things were easy and fun and 
people like myself uh, still have friends from. So uh, congratulations to everyone, to my beloved Todd Graff on the 20th anniversary of camp. Todd, it's Jason Alexander. Congratulations on the 20th anniversary of your fantastic movie, Camp. Uh, 20 years. <laughs> Feels like 20 years ago, I was at camp myself. That's a lie. Wish I had gone to yours, wish I had gone with you, but you brought the experience to us all. Congratulations, happy anniversary. Todd. Todd. Congratulations. Congratulations. I remember the, the first time I saw camp, it was uh, at your editing room, and it was just such a miracle, such an incredible young cast, so brilliant, and, and your writing was so smart and so sharp, and, and, and the, the performances, um, all the young stars that you were finding and creating and um, it's just amazing to think that it's that it's 20 years old um, Wow, 20 years 20 years yeah and I, I can still remember it like it was yesterday um, and I, I look forward to, to revisiting the film mm -hmm. 40 years from now yes uh, and I'm, here, I'm here. so happy to know you congratulations we love you Todd yeah Here's to the ladies who lunch. Here's to the ladies who lunch. <sighs>that was amazing and it's so funny because last night we saw a special thanks to paul thomas anderson right that's why why are we seeing the special thanks uh well he's been a very close friend for a very long time and he when i do a movie i show him cuts i see early cuts of his movies i read scripts of his vice versa and he's just kind of you know i've known him forever you know a lot of famous people <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're one to talk <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> okay so we're testing the piano see if it works because it was buzzy but now we figured out it was the fan above that was making the sound weird how's that what's good is that it was 100 degrees and i turned off the fans and i was 120 degrees so cool guys but at least the piano sounds good okay i'm gonna read a couple of donations because don't forget yes we're having fun but we're raising money for the entertainment community fund which has always helped out anybody in the arts, but now specifically because there's so much striking going on and no one has any income, not just the performers, but everyone around them. I mean, no one's making money. So a couple of things, you can donate whatever the age you want. Plus we have these signed amazing photos. The cast is here, these are just 50 bucks each and a lot of people are getting them. So um, keep ordering them and I'm gonna read a couple of donations. I'm gonna pass this around. So here we go. Joanna, please do the dance from, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> same, same request as last time. Um, here we go, um, number 10. Perry from Florida, 50 bucks. Thank you, Perry. Thank you, Perry. Welcome Thank back, Perry. Starts in the House. Missed you. Jim in New York City, 50. By the way, they're all 5150 because like it covers the blah blah blah. So 5150, very specific. Then uh -huh. amazing. These are all people, by the way, that are also ordering the um the, the photographs and the posts. Why it's all 50. Amazing show, Katya in Pennsylvania, 5150. For Todd, with all of our love, Peter and Karen in New York. Oh, 100 buckos. Uh, let's pass this this way. Daniel, why don't you you sure. read it? Yeah, Why don't you play it on guitar? I don't have my readers. So. Which one, what number am I? Oh, um, <laughs> uh, um, no. I Camp remains. Okay. Camp remains one of my favorite movies of all time. What fun to hear you all again. Would love a signed photo. Josh from Virginia. Oh, Josh. Okay, Joanna. I first met this beauty doing Secret Garden in Catonsville, Maryland. Catonsville, sorry, Maryland in 2000 yeah. when she was 14. Our Mary Lennox was future Broadway star Caroline Bowman. Wow. Seth, yeah. please have her on your show. I can remember the Baltimore premiere of Camp. Exciting. So proud of you, girl. Shannon, $50. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. I'll read another one. Yeah, Taylor, Go keep for going. It. Keep yeah. going. Yeah. I, this is your audition for Camp 2. Talk to your notes. <laughs> Camped out. Or what is that? What is that? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 16 hi i would love to get one of those signed photos of the cast on the steps it was a small image on the stream but i'm pretty sure those are the costume shop steps at stage door they are, they are. i'm a stage door alum and was also at 54 below camp reunion oh, however wow. many years ago that was camp is such a defining piece of media media for my childhood and adolescence also i just made my boyfriend watch it with me <laughs> and i totally forgot the scene where pd and sean are in the office in in the fiddler on the roof costumes yes my boyfriend and i met on the national tour of fiddler so that felt a little cosmic thank you gabriella from new jersey brava <laughs> she don't got no readers 
Come on, give it to Tev. Tev, yeah. Tev, yeah. Right. Happy to donate tonight. I loved Camp when it came out, and I continue to love the great soundtrack album. Mm -hmm. And glad to be donating during this very necessary strike mm -hmm. when the need is so great. Lane, Nashville, Tennessee. You can read it. Yes, $39. Thank you. Yes, Queen. Thank you. Okay. No one, no one that doesn't have glasses can read. Everyone's oh, this over, is good. Well, everyone's this... now over thirty-five. All let's right, be honest. Here's another one, donating in honor of my lovely friend Robin De Jesus. Aww. Tried to pass you the mic. Talk about a star, smiley face. Aww. Send me the lovely photo, smiley face. Patrick in Rhode Island, fifty bucks. Okay. Send me that photo. Hey. Any? Are there any more? There are. No, I want Vince to do it in his own inimitable style. Uh, Number 19. Camp was released while I was in high school. Rude. And was incredibly uh, formative for me. Thank you for making this happen. Seth, obsessed with you all. So let's get cracking, shall we? <laughs> Thank you, Kyle from New York. Yeah. Wow, do we have more? Wow. Shite. Keeping the love going. Photo. Hey, I'm no, keeping no, no, the... No, no, no. Nope. No. Nope. That person actually is requesting money. Um, okay, so, so Tati, I got. Oh yeah, that's how long. So Tati, I have to ask you about Daniel. So I just feel like I, Daniel is so perfect in the damn movie. Like I, James and I are watching. It's like, like the sweetness, the cuteness. Like, did you as soon as you saw him, were you like, that's it? I've never seen by the way more close ups of anybody in a film before. So go. <laughs> Actually, that was like a big uh, back and forth with the, with the other producers about how many close ups there were of Daniel. But not probably not just Daniel. A lot actually, James and I were saying Tommy likes close ups, but actually they were. I loved all the close ups, but there was a lot of like Venus de Milo stunningness. Well, the, it was supposed to be the object of the adoration, and uh, it was um, the the best shorthand way to deal with it. I think you know, like I said, he, yes, when he auditioned, great. There was a slight concern that he was older, and he, he was did going, not look older until I checked the age. No, I you were forty two when you did it. But keep going. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to have to be kissing a minor, oh. and we didn't know if that was <laughs> legal or uh, we didn't. Yeah. You know, anyway, yeah, but at, at the end, at the end of the day, like I said, it was the seventies. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Wait, how did you guys do it? So wait, it was legal, or like you haven't really? Uh, we just did it. No one ever really said anything. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. See, Wonderful. That's what we're striking right now. That's why we're striking. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's, I really, it's it's such perfect cast. I really like to say the whole movie is cast so perfectly. Thank like when you, I like, agree. I mean, when you look at, aren't you just like, how did I find such amazing people? Like everyone is so perfect for the roles. And I think the answer to that is Bernie Telsey mm -hmm. and Victoria Pettibone. Yeah. Love Bernie. I say bravo. They Victoria. were uh, um, amazing. I mean, obviously they continue to be amazing, but this was 20 years ago. It was much earlier on in their career. However, um, you know, Tim Weil was the musical director of Rent, and he's married to my cousin Randy, and so I knew him. And Randy Graff, hello, Fantine. Yes. Sarava. Uh, City of Angels, Tony. Sarava. Yeah. But yes. <laughs> I don't know why I'm referencing that. She wasn't understanding that. Right. Wait, so, okay, so you have to, okay, so hold on, but let me ask you a question. Is it annoying, Joanne? Is it annoying to, like, play the girl that's sort of, like, passive aggressively rejected all through the movie? Aren't you sort of like, can I, like, maybe get the guy? Like, or are you just like, oh, I'm acting. What does it matter? I actually remember having a conversation with Todd about this at one of our rehearsals because the character description is. Ellen is having an unfortunate collision of, shor of, of sharp mind, loud voice, and chunky body. And like that was the character description. And I remember feeling like really down one day after rehearsal. And Todd said, it wouldn't work if you weren't actually gorgeous. I was going to say, you're so pretty. What's sort of odd to me? I was like, it goes to show that people, because it, a lot of times people are like, how did that person get married? It's like, because it's not, sometimes you could be stunning, but also like just be rejected by people. And that's what it was. Because you are, mm -hmm. I kept thinking like, she's so pretty, but... So is it low self-esteem? Like, what was your subtext for why you keep pursuing the wrong person, a.k.a. this clown? You don't be raised by that father. Oh, uh, right. Not my real dad. My real dad's awesome. No, real And he's dad's in awesome. the movie. That's interesting. So, but that's what I, by the way, I have to say, Todd, it's such a shout-out, because you so have the tone in the movie of comedy, but there's so much There's so much realism, and you really balance it. There's, and everyone has, like, such a journey. It's not just one person's story. Everyone has a journey. Well, you know, I did go to the camp and work at the camp, and uh, the and they're like family to me. I'm still very connected to the camp. Stage door. And stage door. And the it it really was. I've said this before, but 
when I got off the bus the first time I ever went to the camp, it really felt like like Dorothy and Oz going from black and white to color. Yeah. And I walked into the lobby. It's a converted hotel. And I walked into the lobby, and uh, although the original wasn't, the original camp. But anyway, there, there were like 10 kids around a piano singing perfectly all of the parts to the opening number of Company. The Bobby, Bobby. Right. Bobby, yes. And they all were playing. They knew what part they were playing. They all sang it in the right key. They were, and I thought, are you freaking kidding me? They not only have, am I not the only 14-year-old who's ever heard of Company, mm -hmm. but they know every single lyric to it and, and perform it just for fun. And the idea that uh, those kids had a place, you know, this uh, and particularly now, thank God that the culture in some some areas has evolved so that kids who are non-binary or kids who are trans or kids who are questioning, uh, they this continues to be this haven, this place yeah. for them to go and be who they are. However, they 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 feel this summer might not be the way they felt last summer or will feel next summer. And yet, okay, so you'll be sleeping in the boys' dorm this year, mm -hmm. but then the next summer you come back and okay, if you want to be sleeping in the girls so, you know that that that's pl it in its own way it always existed like that and so there was way before it got this was 20 years ago we made the yeah. movie uh and and so the the stories of all of the kids that i went there with and then the kids that i taught when i worked there just kind of you know marinated there you know there's 10 more stories that i could have put in that i didn't put in but uh it's because Cindy Samuelson, who, hi Cindy, I know you're watching, and at the time, her parents, Carl and Elsie, who were angels, they let us shoot there without charging a penny. We shot there, we lived there, we ate there. You didn't even call it stage, or you didn't even give them damn credit, Camp Ovation, son they, of a... They asked us not to call it stage. Oh, I mean, uh, <laughs> that was very kind of you. Uh, <laughs> take it back. So I want to just show some bitchery. So this is your bitchery, which I love. You, of course, being the object of all affection. You trying to be a biatch, but Alana out biatching you. Let's watch um, Vince sassafrassing. I think this is the, the scene um, where they're all the canteen. It's Vince, Vince's rudeness. I think it's called like Vince Sass or something. Uh, no, it's called like, yeah, Vince's Vince's hair. Enough. I heard about your little line learning session. You got Vlad to put his arm around you, huh? Ooh, that must be like third base for someone who's never been touched by a boy, isn't it? Alan, wait. Where do you think you're going? You know, I think I know your sister, Cinderella. Mm. <laughs> and First of all, you get the biatchery and you get the amazing eye roll. <laughs> I love it. And we have to give a shout out to Anna, who is so hilarious yeah. in this movie. <laughs> Anna Kendrick shut down weird Carrie White with the crucifix over her bed. Wait, whose idea was it to have a weird wooden crucifix? Dina, Dina Goldman was our fabulous production designer. That was all her. It, we have to show that this is, what I, by the way, what I love about the movie is that like, they're definitely quote unquote inside jokes and they're beyond not explained. So this is the first time that Anna Kendrick meets uh, well, Fritzy meets, I guess, Jill, is that her name? Right. Fritzy meets Jill, and it's such an inside joke, and it's completely not explained. Okay, you can hit it. Excuse me, is there some place we're supposed to check in? Over there. Is this your first summer? No, I was here last year. Remember? We were in Night Mother together. Oh. You're Jill Simmons. My name's Fritzy. Fritzy, of course. Let me. <laughs> Todd, how didn't the producer say you should have Anna Mutter? It's a two person show. Like, that you don't even say it's a two person show and you just hope the audience understands. Night Mother is literally two people. How could you not remember your co star? It's an amazing joke. And, like, Thank I love you. that you didn't explain it. You know, anytime I saw a screening of the movie, if the audience laughed at that joke, I knew we were golden. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I will tell you, it has nothing to do with anything except this hilarious story. Renee Taylor was in a two-person show with my friend Rachel. If you leave me, I'll never... What 
Well, I'm sure she did a lot of two okay. people shows, two person shows, but in this two character show, uh, she she did it, and on, in the scene, she she fell asleep she, on stage. She fell asleep. It's only two characters, <laughs> and afterwards, after when they went for intermission, the other actress said to her, "Renee, you fell asleep on stage." And Renee said, "Can you believe how relaxed I am?" <laughs> Talk about a positive spin. Um, okay, so we're going to go to another live song, which is a great chance for you guys to appreciate that everyone here is performing live um, and donate. So you go to starsinthehouse.com, you make a donation. It doesn't have to be the 50 bucks for the photos. It could be less than that, but it could also be more than that. And all the money, you know, goes directly to um, the Entertainment Community Fund. So we're going to have Daniel. This is your sweet song, which is written by... I can't I can't even Gore remember. Hernandez. Okay, hold on. So it's Michael. People don't know Michael Gore, literally the brilliant Michael Gore wrote, you know. And also. Anybody? Shady, shady. And um, my God. Yes, you all men that eat. And of course, Lynn Aarons. Hello. So, Daniel. And, and I will say that one of the reasons the movie got made was because Michael Gore. I, I was in the original workshop playing Tommy of Carrie, and that's how I knew Michael Gore. I had that bootleg. And, and <laughs> I don't. Oh, and, so good. And, uh, and so I asked Michael if he would write songs for the movie. And because he said yes, I was able to attract the next person. And the next person wow. ultimately leading to Sondheim. And then when Sondheim came aboard, of course, everybody came aboard because everyone wanted to be involved with something oh that's on it. But Michael we gotta Gore get this. is Michael the hero. Gore. I love him. And by the way, the music for Carrie is unbelievable. All right, so Daniel, are you ready to sing your song? When do you sing this in the movie? Tell our nice audience. Um, Bert Hanley, I think Vlad finds Bert Hanley's music. Bert Hanley is sort point. of like Elizabeth Suedos, but like a male version. He writes right. like a really cool but kid show. Washed up drunk. Washed up right. drunk. But he hasn't written a cool kid show in like 20 years. Yeah, and he finds his music in his uh, dorm room, and he pilfers through his stuff, and... And uh, learns the song, and he sings it in the um, cafeteria or whatever. Inside the canteen. Yeah, and then um, Bert Hanley comes in. So we only hear like a, like the first verse of the and song we, in the but movie. But on, on the recording, we have the entire thing. Right. And on the um, you know the DVD. Remember those? Uh, <laughs> yes. In the extras, we have the whole thing, and it's you and the great Kenny Brescia playing guitar. Kenny Brescia. And on the Betamax, we have the choreography. Okay, so here we go. Are you ready? <laughs> All right. Sure. Don't forget to donate at starsnouse.com. Try the piano. Work. Sure. Anybody? Is it okay? Sure. Um, um. For a whole lot of years. That was for Liz. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, by the way, Daniel, when you're singing this, are you yeah. singing it to Joanna? Are you singing it to Alana? Are you singing it to Robin? Because you are a whore in this movie. So no. You're <laughs> singing it to me. Yeah, I was singing. I was singing to Spitzer yeah, definitely. Vince, you're in love with him in the first scene, and then he never looks at you again. <laughs> no, sorry, dear. Sorry, <laughs> it's all good. I sing for you and only you. Wherever I go, I find you. You're in the sound of every hello In everything I do You're the song I was destined to know And I'll always sing for you You went away I should have known you leave so many dreams behind you. Thought I'd be fine just being alone I didn't have a clue But my heart had a mind of its own And would only sing for you Sound of rain Clouds in a winter sky 
in a thousand unsaid words in a thousand crazy reasons why you were meant to fly so fly for me and day by day I'll keep hoping your heart reminds you Nothing but love can stand in our way But love can see us through And maybe that's all I wanted to say I'll always sing for you I will always sing for you. Robin is so hard to work it. Robin, settle. It's not going to happen. You still got it. By the way, Daniel has twins. How old? Actual twins, right? Three and a half twin girls. Twin girls. So, so does, so does Joanna. No. Yeah. Wait a minute. The same twins? <laughs> no. Oh, that's what we're hoping for. We wanted you guys to get together at the end. Wait, you both the twins. Are you both girls too? Yep, identical girls. Oh Almost my. Two years older. Are they? Oh no, they're yours are older. Yeah. Three so three. sweet. I, I know. Totally. St <laughs> still, always in the background. Okay, I feel like I should do the. Mm, I want to make sure. Hold on. Do we have? I feel like I have more donations. Right. Okay. So I think I should do these donations. So hold sure. on. Um, I'm keeping, I would love a photo. I'm a high school social studies teacher. This is new. Okay, so Robin can't see. Who actually <laughs> can see? Yay, Joanna, so give the nice lady a microphone. He said see, not read. <laughs> right, I did say see, not read. <laughs> I'm a high school social studies teacher. Hey! Yeah. And also involved in our theater program. One of my students and I bonded over our shared love of camp. I would love the autographed mini movie poster to add to my movie musical memorabilia. Rhonda from Maryland. Hi, Rhonda! Hey, Tiffany, from everyone back home in Baltimore, we love you forever and always. Keep doing great things. You mean the world to us, and we are so happy the world gets to see you again. Aww. Congratulations to you and the wonderful, talented cast of camp. Love always. Poppy, Miss Sandra, Dud, Jaya, Josiah, Caleb, and Nikki. Well, Any more? I think like, there's like a whole crazy-ass list. There's three more. Okay, Sorry. go for it. Girl. All right, from Casey, Michael, and Lucy from California. Yay! Woo! Casey went to, to camp, stage dramatic. Ah, bravo! Nice. As and a, so did Lucy, her daughter. As a theater camp teenager myself, I fell in love with camp when it first came out. Little did I know that a few years later, I would be honored to get to teach alongside and become good friends with Joanna. Aww. Joanna, thanks for keeping my inner theater kid alive by letting me dance with our students. I adore you, and I'm so lucky to have an inspirational colleague like you. I Aww. love you. I love you too, Megan. <laughs> All right, one more. Hey, y'all, from the live chat, Davion Edwards <laughs> from Big Island, Hawaii. Hey, camp family, it's Davion from the hair department. You all mean so much to me. Great to see you. All my love. Yes. 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 Bravo on the hair. Yes. 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 And by the way, speaking of Big Island, don't forget tomorrow we're raising money for Maui with an Avenue Q sing through, starsinthehouse.com. David, I'm supposed to do some uh, viewer questions, but I don't know if they're ready to go, so yeah, I can move on to something else. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to text them to me? Yep. I haven't given you my phone number. It's unlisted. 555-1212. Yeah. Uh, five, 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 <laughs> Thank you. Always. Anybody? Um, oh, okay. Sorry, we got a text from Jason Hayes uh, saying, Hey, all my babies. After doing all the hair and wigs for this incredible film, it's been such an honor to watch your journeys and careers take off. Yay, uh, Jason. Jason I and Davey. Okay, David, you're texting me this? Yes. Uh, okay, hold on. Sending it right. Okay, David Katz. These are viewer questions that hopefully... "Quote unquote," y'all will answer. Dave, oh my God, a lot. Okay, here we go. Okay, number one, what is it like knowing you're all part of something that is now ha that now has a cult following, and how often do you get recognized because of it? Todd, you never recognize. So pass that down microphone to some of these people. Well, I mean, it's like you wrote it. No one knows. So, <laughs> however, do you get recognized, and how does it feel to be part of something culty? You guys are all in a cult, right? So I don't, I don't get recognized that frequently, but when I do, it's always from this place of absolute love and Aww. connection. There's something about this film that made people feel seen, and mm. that's the, the number one message. Um, I was 
sharing earlier, uh, I was at a drag show a couple years ago, and one of the queens came up to me after the show, and um, she was like, I'm such a big fan of you. You, This film allowed me to do what I do. And then throughout the night, it was just queen after queen buying me <laughs> shots and telling me how much this film meant to them and what a freeing experience it was for them as this young queer kid to see other young queer kids living their young queer lives. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, it's a wonderful thing. God, you made a difference. Robin, you're like the queen of the movie. I mean, you end the movie in drag. The, I, Talk I, to the camera. You know, if I'm like within 10 blocks of, of Times Square, then I feel like I get a lot of love when I'm in the Broadway area mm -hmm. uh, for camp specifically. But, but also I get like a lot of messages from young queer folks who this was the movie they grew up with mm -hmm. and they didn't have much. Or anyone who sort of felt like an outsider and was in need of finding a group that made them feel safe. Um, so that always means a lot. And also, when when I was doing press for Tick Tick, it was crazy tick, how tick, much. Boom, camp, by the way, you call it Tick Tick. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> for Tick Tick, I can't help it. The shorthand just comes. Uh -huh. um, but during Tick Tick Boom, Camp got a lot of love. And I was telling Todd this earlier that, that I felt like Tick Tick Boom was such a we're in such a different place that I felt like Camp got the love that it should have gotten in real time. Um, so it felt like a little like retroactive love. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, because now there's also social media, which there really wasn't in 2003. Yeah, Can you imagine what it would have been? Okay, there's more of your questions, so hold on. I'm going to read them right now. Number two, in your time at Stage Door Manor, <laughs> I guess this is for you, Todd, did anything like the Dream Girls? oh, no, did anything like the Dream Girls plot with the wildly aged slash race inappropriate casting choices really happen? That visual has me in stitches every time I watch the film. Yeah, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing, and they also go through an interesting problem now, or not problem, but situation, yeah, case, it out. which is, and appropriately so, when the, the camp is now far more uh, diverse than it was when I went there. Yeah. And, uh, but there are all kinds of campers who are of color who don't want to have to play necessarily characters who are of color. They want all the entire range mm -hmm. to be open to them, which makes it then again more difficult to do shows with a lot of characters mm -hmm. who are of color. So, yeah. uh, you know, it was, for me back then, it was wanting to, among the other issues that the movie dealt with, it wanted to, in a way that tonally and comedically made sense within our movie, deal with that, that what do you do you know there weren't particularly then there were not enough shows that would feature um you know african americans or latinos or whatever in the heights and yeah there it was pre all of that and so it was kind of my way of at least bringing it up well it's that very it's that line in the last five years where sherry nae scott's Sings about summer stock where there's an actor playing Tevya and Porgy, which I always love. It's basically yes, the same thing. Right. Um, okay, so now we're on the next one, number three. How does it feel to know that camp has such an amazing impact on people even still 20 years later? My inner theater kid still gets butterflies every time I watch the film or listen to the soundtrack. So I guess your kids haven't seen it yet because like they're not, they're going to be like, what the age is going on. Wait, your kids have seen it? So yeah. go talk, talk into the microphone, the oh. fancy ass microphone. Oh. Wait, how old are your kids? <laughs> Um, my daughter is, I'm dropping her at college tomorrow. <laughs> That's why I need my reader. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I want all of your secrets. So wait, what did your daughter say? Was she like a teenager? She's like, whatever, this is not even that good. Or um, is she really nice? I guess she saw it when she was a little bit younger, so she was kind of really into it. But then she goes, she went to LaGuardia. She's a dancer, so she's queer. So she was like, oh yeah, but this is very normal to her. But back then, I, I'm trying to let her know that it, She's so free, but it, it, she, it, it, the people weren't as free then. No, it was groundbreaking. Yeah. I mean, yeah. James and I were saying that so much. I mean, the fact that, that, that he wants to wear a dress to the prom, I mean, like, I mean, now, like, you know, Billy Porter, but it's like, that wasn't happening back then. Yeah. No, it was not. Or certainly not in movies. But also remember that this movie was an independent film produced by Killer Films and Jersey Films and oh, released by DeVito, IFC. Right? Jersey was Danny DeVito, Stacey Sharon, Michael Schamberg, and Killers, Christine Vachon and Pam Koffler and Katie Romanell. But, you know, Killer, really hard-edged, Todd Haynes, queer-forward, <laughs> queer-centered movies, and they never asked me to change anything uh, in that.
that regard. And uh, it was, but you know, you when I, I mean, at the time, I had a deal, an overall deal with Paramount Pictures, because I'd written a lot of movies before I directed this first one. And uh, I, so I, I was contractually obligated to bring camp to them first to see if they wanted to finance it. And they were very interested in, th in theory, except they sat me down in a meeting and they said, listen, you have a lot of gay hmm. kids in this movie. Could, instead of being gay, could they be Trekkies? And I said, Trekkies? <laughs> they said, yeah, you know, those kids who are, because Star Trek is a paramount you know, uh, uh, thing. And uh -huh. I, uh, I, they said, you know, those kids who are very into Star Trek get bullied a lot and have a lot of problems, and why couldn't it be that at the camp? Mm -hmm. And, you know, needless to say, I thought... You said yes. Oh. Of course. <laughs> I want the money. <laughs> and now we'll show the footage of that for a Exactly. <laughs> no, but, you know, that's why I thought this has to be made independently. There's going to be no other way to get it done. Oh, my God, that's interesting. <laughs> God, you didn't say yes. Okay, I have more questions. This is from Leonard Nimoy. Why don't you make a movie about me? Okay, no, it's okay. Um, okay, number four. Did f oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, Did keep it to yourself, I guess. Well, this, sorry, sorry. Anyway, next, you know, the question is, because I just watched the movie again last night, what is the answer? Did Fritzy really mess with Jill's makeup? Because at the end, I mean, spoiler alert, her, her, she has, so did Fritzy really sabotage her? Yes. Oh, yay! <laughs> Anna Kendrick strikes again. I love that. So now you guys know. Okay, number five. In retrospect, do you wish you would have focused a little more on Jenna's storyline? It touched on issues that weren't really explored too much in the movie. It did? They weren't explored? Wait, who's Jenna? You? <laughs> you? Oh, I don't know if that's really true. So she gets her mouth wired shut because her parents are passive aggressive. <laughs> And then at the end, the father's really obnoxious, and the father's like, I guess it's more important to have a talented, happy child. Yeah, but she we certainly has the 11 o'clock number. I think, I think the person means more dialogue in regards to what's going on, what's happening with her, because right, that is true. we really don't know what's going on until the end. And what so did she's you think? coming down the steps with the, you know, yeah. the pliers, it's, and yeah. it's like, you know, he's explaining to her what she needs to do. Uh-huh. You know? so well, what it's, it's not that much dialogue. I think that's what the... What was your subtext? I mean, what, what was your journey in that character? Um, it was an interesting journey because I think... I mean, it was, the be it was the best part for me at that time because I was struggling with my inner, you know, issues of insecurities at that well, you're time. you're a teenager. Anyway. Everyone is, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, you know, with the weight and, you know, just feeling left out and not a part. And, you know, so I kind of embodied the character because it was kind of who I was at that time. Um, wow. So it, it, it meant a lot. It meant a lot for me too. I know it, it meant a lot for you know the fans, but it meant a lot for me too. Because why? Because you because you it helped me. It helped me through. You know, it helped me to get through. You know, because I was I was literally a character who didn't talk the whole movie, and at the end she got to like show what she was trying to show the whole time. So you know, it just it helped it helped push me to to move forward and be the best that I can be. You know, if I was ever nervous, because I was, I'd never done a movie. I know a lot of you all probably had done shows or was in the business. I wasn't. I was at a performing arts school that I didn't want to be at, mm -hmm. you know. So <laughs> it really propelled me and helped me see myself for what I really was, you know. So just like it helped you guys, it helped me too. And <laughs> you, were, you were brilliant. Also, it was hard to write a lot of dialogue for a character whose jaw was wired shut. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but you had the 11 o'clock number, God knows, and yeah. killed it. Wow, Dang. boy, did you. What a voice, man. Okay, so I'll ask the final question. Um, oh, was the skinny dipping really filmed skinny dipping? Robin? <laughs> I love a sock. <laughs> <laughs> I love a sock. An ankle sock or a tube sock? Well, that was what you were wearing. <laughs> <laughs> right? Poor Dill. Yeah. <laughs> I think we were we wore, we wore like dance belts or something. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, and it was like freezing because it was September, and you know that 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 was a brutal shoot shooting that. It was really the winter when you're in like it, you were yeah. Yeah. I think well, we couldn't shoot at the camp when the camp was the camp. The kids would have loved it. No, we needed the whole camp to ourselves. So you had, we had why couldn't there. you do October? You had to be the dead of winter? Because in October the leaves change color. Son of a Wait Next a question? Sorry. No. Jesus. I guess my important question is 
was it a low carb diet? Because I've never seen more <laughs> amazing like <laughs> hips. Oh, there's a mosquito down here. Forget that. Honestly, noise. I don't know. Living in New York, trying to be an actor and carrying a backpack around was enough to keep me in. No, shape. no, 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 no. That's like the women <laughs> that are super skinny. It's like I have a toddler I chase after. That's not true, dear. I I also carried a backpack. I had love handles. Anywho, <laughs> moving forward. Okay, so wait. Now we gotta go. I feel we got. We were supposed to sing. Sure. We we're doing Century Aww. Plant. Who's warmed up? Anybody? No. Okay, don't forget, we got this live singing, which means you mofos have to donate. Uh, okay, now this is the song that... <laughs> Let me say, some of it's really good, and half of it is no one knows what the hell they're doing. Okay, so Vince, you're, we decided you're down the octave, then you're up the octave, and you're on the lower harmony. We're going to make eye contact. It's, yes, I will help you out. Right. Vince is different, and we're not in this song, so it's definitely a free-for-all. David, are you okay? You seem in a state of shock. Okay, you sure? Okay, we're going to donate. We're going to go to starsinthehouse.com and donate because people are back together after 20 years in original keys. Just saying. Here we go. <laughs> 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 Except for me. Who were the people singing who are watching virtually now? Oh, two things I want to say. Don't forget the ending, right? It's never too late. We go to the third. Oh, and um, David, turn off the fan, which will help my music not blow. Uh, here we go. Vince is going to be down the octave because the little boy whose voice didn't change normally <laughs> sings this. And Outside my house is a cactus plant. It's called a century tree. Only once in a hundred years a flowers gracefully. And you never know when it will bloom. Beautiful. One, two, three, fly. Hey, do you wanna come out and play the game? It's never too late. Hey, do you wanna come out and play the game? It's never too late. Clementine Hunter was uh -uh, you're up the octave. Oh, okay, no, no laziness. <laughs> You think I'm gonna notice that? A five, six, seven, eight. Thank you. Uh -huh. Old Uncle Taylor was 81 when he rode his bike across the plains of China. Himself, and no one saw the tears, and then she went away, and he woke up that day. Now she brings roses to his sweetheart, <laughs> she lives most anywhere. She sees someone suffering, she knows that despair. He offers them a rose and some quiet prose. About dancing in a shimmering ballroom Cause you never know when they will bloom Hey, do you wanna come out and play the game? It's never too late It's never too late to play the game Hey, do you wanna come, do you wanna come out, out and play the and game? Play the game?
Stay the whole thing. Sweating. sweating. Literally sweating from that. I think it's impossible to sing that song without just a big stupid smile. Yes, it's so joyous, man. It's fun. Victoria Williams. It's fun. Victoria Williams wrote it. All right, so now we're going to go to our second group. David, do we have all of our fun people? Wait, there's more. We should. So, all right, if you need a bathroom break, we could take, yeah, because there's a, there's a bidet upstairs waiting for you. <laughs> okay, so um, first we got Mario Concepcion. Mario. Mario. No, Mario, my winky? Tony all right, Tony. It's Tony time. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, we have to bring in our controlling mother figure, Leslie Fry's back on. Leslie. Because she got the whole thing going on. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. Who's next? Robert is. Oh, Robert is next. Robert Roscoe, where are you? Hey. I'm obsessed with that. Okay, then we have Julie. Julie. I'm still Hi. Do we have do we have our blonde Caitlin? Caitlin hi, Benzer. hi. Hello. <laughs> am I miss am I missing anybody? Okay, so here. So okay, I want to just show two clips with these fabulous people. So first I want to show uh let me make sure I know where this is. Okay, wait. Oh yeah. So our our director who oh, taught nice. yeah, where's your microphone? So Todd, um, who did you base the director character on? Jack Romano, who was the artistic director at Stage Show Manor for many, many years. And when I tell you that there's nothing made up or exaggerated in this scene. <laughs> Wait a minute, the stage direction is literally eyes, eyes? <laughs> it's 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 uh it's based on a Samuel Beckett play that we really did at the camp where we had to be in garbage urns. So this is, Robert, this is you giving your amazing um, staging notes. Uh, if you would, this is Eyes <laughs> Eyes. I'm obsessed with Back to the top and try not to screw up the blocking this time. Eyes, eyes, nostrils, silent scream. I have to go to the bathroom. Piss in the dumpster. Start again. <laughs> yeah, Bobby. For someone who has no lines, you have all the comedy lines. <laughs> okay, A, that was hilarious. B, we talked about the, okay, we talked about the dream girl scene. Which is this the one where I'm showing the dream girl scene, right? So this is you as Effie. But are we having a little angel who played Curtis? Kyrie, is Kyrie not there? Oh. No. No. Oh. Okay, well wherever you are, Kyrie, we send you love. And we're gonna show. So this is Kyrie or Kyrie. Kyrie. Kyrie as Curtis at the ripe age of eight. And this is you, Joanna, as Effie. By the way, sounding amazing. Thank you. Oh my God. So this is Dream Girls at Stage Door Manor slash Camp Ovation. Okay, hit it, please. No, no way. No, 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 no way. I'm living without you. I'm not living without you. I don't want to be free. So everyone, what's it like watching everyone talk about the movie again? Are you guys having like a weird flashback breakdown? Oh, oh my gosh, I'm sitting here like um, I'm in Mexico right now. Um, well, I'm so tan. Um, I'm sitting here trying not to cry. Um, but it's funny because um, Sasha, men they mentioned about why Sasha wasn't dancing in Turkey Lurkey time. And it's because I like stepped on her foot like uh, crunched her foot pretty good during one of the mini rehearsals. And we shot that film over like it, it, until like five in the morning, like all the musical numbers were shot at night. Um, so we're dancing over and over again, but it just sitting here getting the feels like trying not to cry, but um, losing that battle. Aww, <laughs> we love, I love you. you guys so much. Yeah, guys, I wish we could talk to the virtual people more, but the screen is 85 feet away, so we basically can't see your faces or barely hear you. But Better. it's great seeing you. Um, I look okay, great so then, just so we're clear. <laughs> exactly. I've, I've been aged a day. 
Uh, now we can see you. Oh, now we can see some of you wonderful people. Um, all right, so I guess my just question before you guys go, is there any one amazing moment you remember from the filming? I have Van one. Yes, okay. Last. I have one too. Okay, well, everyone go. So here's the thing that the, the scene between Jenna and her parents was not written in the film. It wasn't written in the script initially. Uh, we had already did our little part where we were down at the dock wishing and sending her off. And I get a call from my agent telling me that that Todd had written in another part. And so I was like, okay, you know, fine. Um, he said, come down to the camp. We went to the camp and we got the script, I think the night of, was that right, Todd? We got the, the write-up, the new write-up, like a night, the night of? It's entirely possible on that movie. Yeah, <laughs> we got the script the night of. And for the first time I said, oh my gosh, I have to do a huge crying scene, uh. you know? But let me tell you, the atmosphere was so set. Mm. Tiffany, the energy that was there, it was so very easy for me to have that moment there. And the thing is that Todd was such a wonderful director. He let us just be us. He let us just, you know, do you. He knew how he had cast. He knew who was there for those roles. And he let us just fly with it. The other thing, too, is I went walking around the, the uh, camp one day. And that was the day that Sondheim arrived. And I almost lost my step, right? With that, he just was standing there. Just imagine, just walking, and and there's Sanhok. So it was just amazing moments. Just a lot of amazing moments throughout this film. We love you, Leslie, and thank you for thank putting you. the whole thing together with Eddie. Yes. Thank, you. thank you for the reunion. All right, memories, memories. And Mario, your favorite face from Promise Promises, he's here now. You mean on screen? Yeah. I'm on the West Coast. <laughs> it's all. Uh, you literally thought it was three hours from now. Excellent. Um, all right. Anyone else favorite memory that I got? Most? I got a memory. I got a memory. Todd. Okay. So good to see you. Uh, can it's everyone you. hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Really quick. Um, so I had never auditioned for a movie. I'd done theater since I was 16 years old. So it was all stage stuff. Um, I auditioned for the Broadway revival of uh, Man of La Mancha, uh, and it was for Bernie Telsey. And Victoria called me and said, hey, um, this is uh, you know, Victoria from Bernie Telsey. Um, I want to let you know you didn't get Man of La Mancha, but um, would you be interested in coming in for this film? It's called Camp. And I said, I've actually never done a movie, so sure, I'll, I'll go in. I went into the audition. I had one audition, and it was Todd and Victoria, and I had nothing to base it on. I literally had just finished my first on-camera class. And I did it once and Todd said, okay, uh, good. Can you do that again? And did it again the second time. And he goes, okay, okay, thank you for it. Thank you, that's great, thank you. And I'm like, well, there goes that. You know, I'm, I'm not, gonna get, <laughs> not gonna get this. And then I got the call. So I had no reference whatsoever, except for Todd saying, uh, you're perfect for this role. And then it was based on a real character that, that uh, this is how brilliant Todd is. Um, he based it on someone that he knew. No, you totally are, Todd. Um, and everyone in the film is so much of themselves. So there's a little piece of everybody who is really authentic and real. And it's so, it's such a great memory that I'm like, on a whim, I went into this audition. Uh, it's another lesson, by the way, show up to every audition, even if you don't think you're right for it, just go. Um, but Todd, thank you for the, and everyone, thank you. It's so good to see you. It's wonderful. We can't hear you, my friend. Oh, I was muted. I said you had one audition and Robin had 10. Okay, um, well, exactly. Okay, more. let me hear it. I have, one. I have one. Can I go? Okay, um, so I was at Stage Door, like it was my final summer, when the core was doing their rehearsals. I got to like take a Greyhound down from camp to audition um, and then got called to the office uh, to find out that it was Todd on the phone telling me, you didn't get the role of Ellen, like you auditioned for. Um, but you did, uh, I have a few things for you if you want them. And I was like, of course. Um, and then I felt like the coolest person in the world. But okay, so I watched the movie two nights ago. And Julie Kleiner is like, literally an angel, the nicest person in the world. And I couldn't stand her because she was skinny and talented and everyone liked her. And I knew, and so I didn't know that she was one of the other people in this, like, I'm still here audition what sequence. Is going? <laughs> no, you were, I mean, like, literally love, um, and Julie and I played sisters, can you not tell? I guess it's like our bangs years. Um, <laughs> like, we're at that age where let's cover half of it. Um, but, so anyway, 
it was we were there were four of us initially Brittany also and and there's someone else who's auditioning for like i'm still here and like right before we start this other girl is like this key's too high i need it in a lower key um and so julie kleiner the voice of stage romantic like literally the the most amazing voice and i'm just here for like some panache not my voice um uh, todd's like well then you go up you like let's take you a half step up or whatever yes and i was like i'm sitting next to julie kleiner and you're asking me to go higher okay awesome you're um so anyway that's why uh there's one of us is singing in a higher key yes i um, love that <laughs> and um because i there was someone singing in a lower key um and like but also because unlike the other songs in the movie this one was recorded live when we yeah. were shooting everything else they were uh, lip syncing yeah i God, everyone is so effing talented. Uh, wait, by the way, before I forget, we're almost out of our eight by tens. We have so few left. So Vince, what are you offering here? This is Vince, Hello. Cinderella's sister. Uh, here, take a microphone. You don't have a body mic here. This, okay. Today we've got a signed, autographed uh, copy of our, what is this? The, um, the premiere. premiere. It's a ticket to the premiere. Uh, yeah, signed by the by the cast. That is the that is the only yeah. ticket we have to the premiere. Signed by the cast. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So hence a hundred bucks. For the New York yes. premiere. So got, that is yeah, for the New York premiere. That is New York premiere. premiere. Yeah. And the uh, tickets actually still in. So a hundred a hundred bucks for that. Okay, we have to go to our next video. So every, everyone in the virtual watch this video and then we have to say goodbye to you. So this is a shout out from someone that you know from the cast. So David, show the video of our friend from the cast that says hello. We gotta give it. I love you. Hi, my name's Don Dixon. I played the role of Bert Hanley in the camp. And I sure wish I could be there tonight with everybody. I'd love to see everybody, but I'm out on tour playing these old theaters. It's kind of fun, but sure would be fun to be there with everybody 20 years 20 years todd how was that 20 years ago anyway i wish i could be there i would sing a song with everybody i'd try to anyway but i'll be down there wish i could be with you Um, hey everybody, ignore my tank top, it's so hot down here. So um, I have, just for the stars in the house, people that are obsessed, look who I have on my phone. I don't know if you can see him there. James Wesley's here. Hi, James. James! This show's been amazing. I'm actually not that far from stage door upstate right now. Yes, you but probably can't tell. I just saw two bucks run by. But by the by the way, you're yeah. also in a witness protection program. I've never seen a scarier, <laughs> <laughs> literally terrifying. So, ah, look how cute he is. Trust me, I'm a, I'm up saying not that far from stage door manor. But listen, I wanted to say this. This is really important before the show ends. I think you know Robin DeHaces was so great. Robin, hey, what up, um, oh. And he literally, Robin literally got an Uber driver to like deliver his, his like five by seven color photos from camp. I went to Kinko's to like get them uh, copied into the eight by 10, but I think we're out. I think we've, we've done so many $50 donations, which by the way, Seth Rudetsky, I had said a hundred, look at those fans, but you did 50 and now we're sold out. So this is what I'm going to propose. I'm going to propose maybe. that um, that we do that, you know, like maybe Robin, we can do more and then and then you'll sign them because I'll see you soon and we can get whoever can because I think there's going to be more than 25 donations of over $50. Okay. I got you. All right. All right, James. Thanks for adding me. I've never seen a more close up of my chest hair. Thanks. I literally should have waxed. All right. Bye, honey. I'm going to do that. Thanks. Talk to you later. So everybody, we haven't officially run out of um, photos because Robin's going to make more copies. What are you pointing to? Look in the lens. <laughs> what am I looking yeah. at? Oh, sorry. I'm looking at myself, though, because I'm obsessed with my helicopter, not since Miss Saigon, Liz Calloway. Um, all right, so hold on. Take this back. Okay, so before we do oh, our sorry. last big song, Todd, tell everybody how you got Sondheim and what the hell he did and how um, 
I mean, I really can't believe Sondheim, he didn't surely, surely he didn't go on location. Not only did he go on location. That was really him there? That was a green screen. No. <laughs> that was really him there at the real camp. And uh, not only that, but we had gotten him a hotel suite nearby. And he said, but we were shooting at night. And he said, well, where is everybody else sleeping? And I said, well, in the bunk rooms of the camp. That's where we did. He said, I'll sleep in a bunk room. And he did. He's, he worked all night. He slept in a bunk room. They put a plaque up. Sondheim slept here after he left. Yeah, I've seen the bunks yeah. at State Store Manor. It's basically like balsa wood. Yeah. I mean, it's it's completely up to code for those yes, whose parents is. are concerned <laughs> yes. but about still, sending their children. But still, when he woke up, was it... <laughs> Where are you going? Exactly. Marcel, anybody? Reference? Yeah. Oh, my he, God. He... He allowed us to use any song that I wanted to use that he had written, gratis, which meant that we could go to everybody else and say, well, Steve Sondheim said we could use his stuff for free, oh and God. nobody was going to charge more than he did. Oh, my and God. And he really was an unbelievable... And he said no to being in the movie up until five days before we started rehearsal. He said, no, I can't. He would write me these letters uh -huh. saying, I can't, I can't. And I would say to him, it, uh, it's too late. Who, who is it going to be? You know, Martin Charnin? Like, uh, not that I don't I love, love Martin, Martin Charnin, Charnin, but I love him too. But but I don't... The kids would know, all worship. Not, the sign of photos exactly, there. Exactly. And then my angel, Arthur Lawrence, said, let me talk to him. And Arthur talked Steve into it, and Steve said, okay, I'll do it. And he, and like I said, he not only showed up, he stayed all night. He ate with everybody. God. He hung out with the kids. He talked. He answered questions. He slept in a bunk room. He was pretty amazing. Okay, I can't believe it. David, let's watch the actual clip. <laughs> I love that they're, they're literally banging on the window. <laughs> it's so crazy. Do you guys remember filming that? Wait, Vince, were you actually, hold on. Yeah. Were you actually freaking out? I, I, yes, I think we all were freaking out. <laughs> hold on, wait, Bagel's eating rum with my cat food. Rum, oh, bagel, bagel, nice bagel. try. No. Hold on, no, no, no. No, Here, I, no don't, don't worry, I'll just move it. Okay. Look at this wonderful view. Can you just give me a... Oh, no, he's gone. Okay, good. Okay, sorry. Yeah, Bagel, we were, all we he does is either eat the cat out. food or go to the litter box and eat something else and don't ask why. <laughs> okay. um, so you were saying you did love it? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. What an honor to to grace the screen with, a, with such a And the only thing. movie he ever made. He did a tiny little, like, Zoom cameo in well, Wait a minute. Out. He was really yeah. good at Tick, Tick, Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody? What? I went there. <laughs> Stupid. Actually, that, that was one of the, uh, the reasons why I wanted to do it was... No, he hates. He hated the way he looked, and particularly on screen, he hated the way he looked. And after it was done, and after he saw it, he wrote me a letter that I have framed, that said how much he loved the movie and how happy he is that he did it. He said, "If only you could have gotten somebody else besides the schlub who played me." Oh. First of all, he's so good. Um, let me just say, by the way, Cindy Samuelson from Stage Door Manor, who we love so much, by the way, made a donation in your honor to the Entertainment Community Fund. We love that. We have so many donations, but look, we have to basically end. So let me just soon. So let me just say we are going to do we're going to do that. This a hundred bucks for the um, for the invitation. Part B. We're going to do more photos that Rama's going to print for fifty bucks. Sorry, James. You go to starsandhouse.com to donate. And so, Todd Graf, is there another movie going to happen? Another camp movie? Yes! Well, it's written, and I tried to get it done. Yeah. It's really hard. You think it's hard to raise money for people affected by the strike? Try, you know, raising money for the camp sequel, apparently. Uh. But, uh, but it was, you need it's. More yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's a pretty good script, I think. Can we just do like a live reading of it? That would be great. I would do that. Hey, can we do a live reading of it on Stars in the House? I would love that. Oh, oh look at that. You better hustle. And I will say that there is a cameo written for Patti LuPone who said she would do it in the movie. I heard that. Is there a, hold on. Is there a cameo written for Seth Rudetsky? <laughs> 
who is, I think, still non union. Now that we're on strike, I'm not SAG anymore. Okay, so did you hear that? We're going to do a reading of Camp Two. It's called Camped Out. Wait, what is it called? <laughs> it's called It's called Freaks in Nature. O M G! I'm so excited. It'll be a great way to get some donations. Sure. Is there music written for City, it yet? City said, "Stage doors in." Stage doors yeah, in. Ready? There you go. Yay! Great. You are. There's parts for everybody. Oh. Everybody that was in the first one. But this this time everyone has their mouths wired shut. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're gonna close with this. This is our big song, right? Yeah, sure is. Um this is called Here's Where I Stand, right? Number Here's where I stand. Okay, we're singing live, so all my live singers come for Oh wait, before we go, hold on, Robin DeHaze, just get a microphone. I okay. <laughs> so Robin, just please tell everybody, um, what your friend said. First of all, describe your skin condition and then say what your friend said to you. <laughs> you I always want me to tell this story, yo. It's my story, yo. Story, go. Yo. So I was, I was in a situation once where I had a rash break out on my hands and feet and I didn't know what was going on and I called my best friend. I was like, yo, I have a rash on my hands and my feet. He said, wait, what, Robin? You have a rash where I said my hands and my feet. He said, girl. And I said, what, Dominic? Just, just tell me. Like, just tell me straight up what is it. He go, girl, I think you got syphilis. <gasps> <laughs> I did not have syphilis, but I did get the first shot just in case. I got it eventually, but not at that present moment. Why would a rash? It gets better. <laughs> That's not even a symptom. <laughs> and by the way, it wasn't, I think. It was, girl, you got syphilis. You're right, you're That's right, what right. I love. It was so direct and authoritative. What a thing to probably, it turned out to be gout. You know what I mean? <laughs> like some other 1500, you know, disease. Anybody? 776? Okay, why don't I feel all my, aren't you singing in this final number? Why don't you guys come yeah, near the damn awesome. microphones? But isn't there a backup in this shit? Yeah. It's the finale. Can we get that fan on, Tiffany? Oh, well, you. no, the little one. The yeah, one over the here. One on, it's also awesome. written by Michael Gore and Lynn Aarons. Yeah. Michael Gore and Lynn Aarons. Did I, okay, so this is our final yeah, song. Yeah, just scoot on down. Everyone tune in the hell tomorrow night for Avenue Q, and we're raising money for Maui. Do we have Do we have a shot of Mandy on the couch? Where's my Mandy? Good girl and bagel. Um, here's where I stand. Okay, we all ready? Yeah. Now, I begged everyone to take this down a step, but it turns out everyone's voice is too amazing. Did you ever come out? Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry, I've never heard a better voice. They were against me. <laughs> I think I know this.
I'm counting Oh, I'm counting I'm counting I'm counting Oh album out this week? Yes, Wait. my album drops Friday. Details, where do we get Please it? Please pre-save. You can go to social media, Tiffany Taylor Music. Tiffany? The link is in my bio. Tiffany Taylor Music. Tiffany Taylor Music on all platforms. Okay, so unlike a lot of other recording artists, she can sing live. <laughs> that was literally an F on an U vowel. Not an O vowel. Yeah! It was an ooh, pure on an F original key. Tiffany Taylor music, you better buy that shit. Yeah. It's hot in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Please pre save. It comes out Friday. Link in bio, Tiffany Taylor music. Absolutely. So pre save to... right now. Absolutely. And we have to say thanks to Seth and to James. Yeah. Uh, and David, David Katz. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Seth. for making it happen for all that you do. This is just one show of a million that they do, yeah. raising a ton of money. And it's, uh, it's a tough time now. There's two yeah. strikes. It's historic. It's un almost unprecedented. It's been like 50 or 60 years since SAG and the Writers Guild went out at the same time. And it's People what Fran said. It really is emblematic of the entire world. Yeah. Because everything's being... And yep. sadly, we lost. Local 802 lost. Musicians lost. We gave in. And now it's these pathetic nine-person bands on Broadway because we made these exceptions. And it's, Broadway is not the same as it used to be. And it's devastating. Mm. Bray B was that full orchestra with the string section. Writers Guild, SAG after, we cannot give in or it's going to be Union a whole movie. Strong. Yeah, Union yes. Strong. We don't want AI damn movies or writer generated bullshite. No. The camp right. sequel is going to be written by Todd Graff. Ah! Um, bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Keep Thank donating. Donations. Thank you, too, too. Yes. Yeah. Tiffany Taylor Music. Tiffany Taylor Music. That was great. Oh, that Thank was so